Well, happy Memorial Day, all you radio fans. It's Bob in one KPR. And uh, you're looking at a, a thing I call the uh, a diversity controller. And uh, this is an outgrowth. No, this actually got built because of coronavirus. CV-19, as I like to say, has caused so much boredom. Uh, that I decided to put about 15 years worth of uh, half-hearted uh, design work into uh, into actually a working model. Uh, I've been playing around with this with this since the middle OOs. That would be 2005 to you uh, people that have different calendars. Um, and uh, coming up with various different designs and circuits and studying people like Dallas Lankford and a few others. Uh, the, what is it? The PDC model and MFJ has one and a few others. And I decided, ah, what the hell? Let's just, let's just go for it. It's uh, Corona boredom. So here we are. And by the way, I hope you're all safe. I'm safe. Uh, it's Memorial Day. It's gloomy. It's rainy. And I guess that's apropos for remembering our our fallen comrades um all right here's uh here's where we started uh what do we got there for a date i have 2007 on that so that's 13 years ago and you know we were trying different things where we could flip flop the uh the main antenna and the sensing antenna this is this would be for noise reduction. If you're going to do it for uh, diversity reception and steering, two antennas, you can do that. You have two different antennas outside, and you can steer them, but we'll get into that. Um, anyhow, uh, reversing switch, and then uh, sensitivity controls, uh, preamps, um, how to balance the signal level uh, between the two. I'm getting a little flippy here. Uh, some isolation, and then, uh, actually phase angle selection through the transformer, and then flip-flopping the output again, so that you can, uh, select at the output which, uh, phase you're here. This will do 0 to 180. Well, you're going to want to go to 180 through 270 to 360, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but anyhow, that was uh, an early one. Uh, we get into, there you see it, phase two. And uh, we made some more changes in there. And that flew by. There was a phase three. I don't know where the stupid drawing is right now. Um, and then I came up with, I guess this is phase four. I didn't mark it that way. But uh, uh, we made some other changes. Um uh, and added some uh, buffer, you know, buffer resistor. Where's my pointer? You know, buffer resistor in here to to not load this winding when we go to ground over here. Uh, another buffer here to keep this at 50 ohms. And again, it's all very. Uh, well, I'm not gonna say very. It's just a little sketchy at the moment. It does work. And it works well. Uh, there's a few little things I'd like to change about how the controls function. The the actual uh, uh, the actual ergonomics of the controls. Um, quickly, once again, very nice uh, clean power supply here. Uh, let's see if we can just show that. I've got a got a Pi circuit in here to keep the uh, uh, whatever ripple or switching noise from the transistors or the uh, regulator, uh, keep that off the line. And then we decouple again out here with this cap and uh, yeah, the usual stuff. Here is the uh, input balance, where we go from balanced to unbalanced, which would be on this uh, thing right here. And the other... Torrid. This is type 43 material, and I wind them to about 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 in reactants 
which would be about 200 ohms for the lowest frequency. That way it keeps any losses out of the circuit. Uh, and they're very broadband. I like I like these uh, types of toroids. They're very, very nice. Uh, but this is the one uh, that you have here that does all the mixing from the... Uh, from this uh, phase controlled output back to the reference. This would be antenna B's output and then the uh, output winding, which is totally isolating from the circuit. So this, uh, this toroid does all the mixing and very low loss. I might I measured uh, less than a dB right across the band. I'm pretty, well, I already said that I'm pretty happy with it. Anyhow, uh, coming in, we have A and B antennas, and um, what happens here, how do I, do you ever notice I'm not a photographer? Uh, you can shun them or not when you're setting up and doing testing, so uh, we have that facility, that's these two ports back here. I'm using, on this port, my outside uh, 160 antenna. And on this port, I'm using a noise-sensing antenna that's here in the shack. It's strung around the ceiling. And over here is the output. And, uh, well, we're on the back panel. Here's 110, but it's got plastic on it with yellow dots. That means don't touch it. Stop it. Same thing. I did that on the power switch, too. See? Plastic. Okay. Back to the front panel. Um, system bypass. Normal which is, uh, would be antenna A will be the primary. Antenna B is going to be the secondary. Or you could take antenna A, assuming your primary is the real, real good antenna, flip this down and go direct to the output. It just bypass the entire system. That's another thing you could do when you're setting up to cancel noise or to steer two antennas. Uh, you can always go back for a reference back to zero. Just go say, hey, I wonder what it's like uh, without this unit in line. And here we are. Flip it down. The unit is totally bypassed. This port will go directly to this port. And never the twain shall meet. All right. Um, antenna sign. Up. It's going to be normal. There we go. Um, and that's A is the primary as assigned. And if you flip it down, why aren't we focusing? Uh, B becomes the primary. So again, there's another test. Hey, which antenna works best as I adjust this thing? So you can reverse uh, uh, how you assign the antennas to the preamps. 15 dB preamps, my uh, new normal, and I'll get to that in a second. Drive level calibrated. This is actually true RF gain calibrated, so you know where you are. Okay. Uh, gain controls 10, and uh, if you can see that, plus 15 is the tops. So that's pretty accurate. The same with B, just a duplication of A. Between them, and logically located, I think is the ratio of the mixing between the two. And that's done through a dual pot here. So it controls the ratio of signal level that's going to come over to this thing. And this thing controls all the phasing. 0 to 180, and then it's just a double pole flip-flop thing. And we go from uh, 180... You can crank it through uh, 270 and 360 and so forth. And uh, the calibration. All right, now, let me put some audio on here. Get the uh, radio working. Now, if you hear that, we got noise. All right, let me adjust the phase here between the two antennas. Look, watch this. I hope you can hear that. Go all the way over. And the mixing. As we favor 
What an antenna. I got big fat hands. You hear it clear up. All right. Now we'll reverse it. I find out, well, oh, that's not so bad. But there's the bad spot way over on this side now. Remember, it was it's over here. So that's how close to uh, 90 degrees we are being out of phase. And uh, sure enough, it works. Uh, the thing is that the levels aren't always held in there uh, exactly right. Because as you're going through the phasing, back to here. So you're going to this, through these phasing uh, shifts, you're actually changing the level too. So I could fix that with a uh, uh, Unity Gain uh, uh, preamp and with dual pots uh, uh, calibrate it so that the thing actually, uh, the thing, the, the dual pots could actually. Uh, how would I say this? Coordinate, I guess. So as this goes closer and closer uh, to ground side or uh, whatever the signal level change is, that the pot level or the amplifier level would be adjusted accordingly to keep a unity gain. I don't know if I'm going to do that because you already know if you have two antennas that are in phase and you come over here and you start tweaking them out of phase, you're going to get a level drop. Uh, and if you're doing this not for noise abatement, but for uh, true antenna diversity and steering two antennas, like when I had two verticals outside, one in here and here about 50 feet apart, uh, I could actually steer the pattern. And I was using AM broadcast stations up in north, up in Harford, and south down in Bridgeport uh, to prove that you could steer. Hear me? Can you hear me staring? I'm staring. Uh, a little bypass. I'll get rid of the noise. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it. Uh, again, it's uh, <laughs> I I probably am not the best producer in the world. I've been told, so it's been confirmed. Uh, but if you uh, little are a little confused about the actual functionality of this thing uh, maybe you want to watch it again I don't know, maybe you want another nap I don't know but again, we'll go through it really quick uh, it might make a little more sense now uh, flip-flopping antenna inputs A and B or B and A however you want to do that a bypass switch so you can take a reference antenna bring it all the way around to the output you can always switch this thing out this whole monkey business out and compare it to the raw signal preamps for both um true rf gain i'm calling it sensitivity but it's really rf gain very low impedance output trans uh, uh what's the word nobody knows the word all right i'll tell you preamps uh very low impedance so they're acting like little mini power amps and so there's no loading uh, level changes here as you make adjustments. You can actually load these things down to uh, 25 ohms and not see any problems. Uh, dual pots for balance. This goes up. This one goes down to ground. Down to ground. Up to signal. This comes around here. No matter where you set it. To be fed into the mixing toroid. This one goes into the phasing toroid. Center tap ground, and swing it through the phases, come over to here. Which phase do you want? 0 to 180 or 180 to 360, you got it. Mix that into the toroid too. Come out here to the output, listen to your news, weather, traffic, and uh, enjoy. So that's it. I've tested it now from about 10, uh, no, I'm lying, about uh 14 to 19 kilohertz down there. I, I should go lower and check it out there, but it's I'm sure it's good there at 10. Uh, out to 32, and it works. It works best mid-band. Uh, well, it probably has a lot to do with my antennas. But that's it. Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, just go away quietly. No thumbs down, please. And uh, we'll be back with some more mods, I'm sure. This is not, not, not finalized. 
Uh, and uh, I'm hoping we'll have some real fun with it. Uh, listening to a nighttime AMDX and so on and steering antennas. Or I don't have a whole lot of noise to cancel in this neighborhood now. I'm kind of lucky at the moment. But, uh, oh well, you never know what will happen. So I'm going to use it as antenna diversity rather than noise canceling. There you have it. It's the uh, Papa November Delta PND1 phase controller, the one and only. I'm building another one. A guy said... He might be interested. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't figured a price, so he may not be interested. That's it. Bob in one KPR is uh, in one KPR is the uh, YouTube channel. Please join if you like it. If you like to talk about silly stuff and goofy time killing hobby stuff, um, website www.bobsamerica.com. Uh, and here is the. Uh, this is up on my uh, other YouTube things. This is the dual preamp thing. Get some better lighting. Uh, very simple, very uh, uh, very clean. High dynamic range transistors. No mimics. No ICs. Uh, none of those little delicate things. This these are uh, real heavy duty junctions for this kind of signal level. And uh, the last thing you want to do is start clipping up here in the front end. You don't want to do that. And this has great dynamic range. I don't have the numbers in hand, but believe me, uh, if you're doing medium wave DXing or strong signal, uh, strong signal uh, near field stuff and all that, you're not going to overload these things. You're not going to get any IM out of there. All right, that's it. Went really, really long. Again, stay safe. Have a great Memorial Day or whatever time you're watching this. Uh, Bob, N1KPR, bye-bye.